Hello friends, welcome. Welcome to the Hey Brownberry YouTube channel. My name is Marcelin and it's my pleasure to have you back on the channel. I didn't do my normal podcast intro because this is not a standard podcast where I talk about my making and my making journey. This is actually a special bonus episode, if you will. I wanted to take the opportunity and share something with you that was shared with me. It is a new pattern book and it's by a friend of mine, Charlotte Stone. The book is Charming Colorwork Socks. It's a collection of 25 knitting patterns for colorwork socks. If it's your first time visiting my YouTube channel, you may not know that I am a knitwear designer and I have primarily designed sock patterns uh, for the last few years. So sock patterns and designs are near and dear to my heart. It is the thing that gave me confidence to enter the knitting world in a different way. So it's my pleasure to have something from that space to share with you. Charlotte Stone is known as Stone Knits on Instagram, and that is also her design brand name, I believe. And she is someone I have had the pleasure to meet in person and spend time with, which is a big reason that I thought I would really like to share Charlotte's work with my friends here on the podcast channel. I don't do a ton of reviews. Maybe in the future that's something that I'll add to the conversation here. But if I really feel something is share worthy, those of you who've been here before know that I'll share it with you happily and that I also invite you to share with me. Have you seen this book yet? Do you have a copy by any chance? I've recorded some video of kind of a flip through of the book just so that you can enjoy some of the patterns along with me. And it's probably easier for you to view the beautiful color work patterns through pre-recorded video than for me to hold up the patterns and deal with lighting shifts and whatnot. So I hope you'll enjoy as I'm talking about the book, seeing some of what's inside. Charlotte reached out to me before the book was available to order and asked if I would like a copy and if I would like to take a look at it and I felt that I wanted to talk about it with you all um, or through my social media that I was welcome to do that and I took some time to think about it. I'm just going to be very open about that because as I said I don't do that kind of content very regularly so for one thing I thought is that something that I could do comfortably but that thought was immediately followed by but I know Charlotte, and I love Charlotte's sock designs, and I've actually knit her pattern, so yes, this is something I feel like I can speak about with my friends here. That's you. First and foremost, what I love about this is the fact that it's a collection. So I am all for choices and options. 25 color work patterns is a lot of options. If you just start with the color work motifs that are in this book, you've already got a lot to choose from. And Charlotte has done a brilliant job of collecting those patterns into categories depending on what you're into. And I love that. We are spoiled for choice with this just from using the patterns as they are. When you add in using yarns that you love, um, choosing colors that you love, and matching those up to a specific pattern, the choices are almost limitless. You can knit different sizes from within the book, so even if you don't necessarily need 25 new pairs of socks for yourself, if you do, no judgment, but if you would like to, you could gift socks to others with these really fun patterns in them, and because they are themed, in different ways. You could pick a friend, decide on what they love, and knit them a pair of socks that totally represents that. I think that's fantastic. I also love the fact that this book really shows how passionate Charlotte is about this particular kind of design. It's clear to me from flipping through the book and reading over some of the patterns that she has really come to a level of expertise for color work knitting design. The book provides tips in the very beginning that are the common things you might want to know when diving into color work knitting in particular. And you can tell that Charlotte has a lot of experience in designing socks in particular because our feet are also different, right? So, you know, you want patterns that you can kind of um, 
you can kind of make to fit your style from the color work perspective, but also you know, have the right sizing and yarn recommendations and other tips and tricks to help you when choosing a project. So I really appreciate that. As I was going through, I made some notes on things that stood out to me about the book. So I'm going to share those with you. Within the book, there's a variety of styles of color work. Raise your hand if you've never tried color work knitting. <laughs> I have done color work knitting of all different styles. I've done mosaic knitting. I've done traditional stranded color work. I've tried intarsia. There's so many ways to do color work. These are stranded color work designs and I feel like the variety that Charlotte introduced in that particular color work style is, I would say, simple, um, smaller kind of color repeats all the way up to things that have, you know, more colors, multiple colors involved. And I think that's great because whether you're a beginner or a very seasoned color work knitter, that means there's a lot in here for you. Or you could say, I'm going to start with one of the patterns that has a very simple color work motif and maybe work my way up to something that involves a few more colors or involves a, uh, or has more involved repeats. So I love that. So the motifs that I notice the most are the ones that are whimsical. <laughs> That's the best word I can think of. Um, there are categories within the book that kind of separate out what I'm guessing is the inspiration uh, for Charlotte. So animals, food, seasons, scenery, those kinds of things are um, present throughout the book. But there are motifs that just kind of call you back to something that is familiar in a lot of cases. And that allows me to touch on already one of my picks. So as part of this review, you're also going to find out which patterns from the book I intend to knit. So there are motifs that are striking, but they're also very familiar. One that I love is Blooming Lavender. I'm, I'm a plant-loving person. Um, I describe all the benefits of plants as plant magic. So I think this one jumped out from the book and grabbed me. You'll see some video of it. very recognizable to me as a lavender plant. I think that's just so fun. It's something that you get to enjoy on the cuff of your socks. And I have definitely picked that out as one that I would like to make. Another one that I find to be whimsical and thematic are the coffee break socks. The coffee break socks stood out to me because I am a coffee lover. I, I'm a coffee drinker. I drink coffee every day. And you know, you think of coffee, you think of the smell of coffee, the aroma. A lot of people have told me that they love the smell of coffee even though they don't drink coffee. <laughs> I probably started drinking coffee because I love the smell of it so much. I just had to know if I'd also like the taste. And then, you know, coffee beans, um, for the most part, there's that rich, dark, chocolatey color of coffee. And Charlotte perfectly captures that in my second pick from the book for socks that I would definitely knit from this collection. We were talking about the coffee break socks and my battery died, so I had to take a battery break. <laughs> so Charlotte perfectly captures that aroma and color and that feeling of just ease of really any hot beverage break. So you could imagine that there's tea in these little coffee cups or tea cups. Of course, if I'm going to knit some of these socks, from the book, I'll need to choose yarn, so I thought I would show you a couple of things that came to mind when looking specifically at the coffee break socks. I'm drawn towards those. <laughs> no surprise. I went to my stash and I looked at some of the colors if I wanted to mimic the high contrast. What I love about this yarn is that it comes across as a single color, you know, when looking at it from far away, but close up, you can see that it's really quite a heathered color. This is Rama Phenol PT2. And for the coffee beans and cups, I thought maybe this Jameson and Smith fingering weight yarn might work well. That it's a deep, dark chocolatey brown. I have another option. This is some John Arbin. It's one of their Zwerpless blends. 
I'll try to find, I don't have the ball band on this one, I'll try to find the exact yarn type, but it's a John Arbin fingering weight yarn, and I know that there's Orbliss in it. I balled it up way, way back when I got some at the Edinburgh Yarn Festival. This is also a nice dark, dark brown um, that would make a really good contrast in the Coffee Break socks. I already know that I love knitting with these yarns and I also know that they're great for color work. They both, or they all have that slight halo of a nice woolly wool. And the great thing about a yarn with a little bit of halo is it tends to fill in all the spaces in between your stitches for color work. So it makes a lovely smooth fabric when worked together. So it's nice to know that from my stash, I already have some options to get a sock project going from the Charming Colorwork Socks book. If you follow me on Instagram, I tend to share a lot about my projects there as well, so whenever this gets going, it's a fairly good chance that I will be sharing it over there as well, maybe even here on the podcast. This collection is like a resource book, something to keep on your bookshelf and keep in your pattern library. As I mentioned earlier, I really feel like Charlotte's expertise in this particular kind of design comes out right from the start of the book. The sections in the beginning talk about things like floats and how to manage floats with your color work knitting. Choosing colors, in my opinion, Charlotte has done a brilliant job of choosing color combinations for the patterns in the book, which I think would be very easy to, to mimic, as well as to shift to your own color palette. And she talks about color dominance and what that means when using, you know, two different colors or three different colors in the same row. She talks about finishing, blocking, and care of your socks. I will say, if you're going to put the effort in to work these color work patterns, you definitely want have to have socks out of it that are going to last. So she has some good tips on how to wash, block, and care for your socks. I think that just makes this more than a pattern collection. It really gives you empowering information for any of your sock knitting. And it shows you where some good areas to focus with patterns that you choose. You know, the designer may be offering you their creativity in what they've presented, but I think giving that extra bit of pro tip, as I like to call it, is a nice way to say, here you go, maker. Now you are emboldened with this information to knit these patterns or others with that extra bit of knowledge. Love that. It's the way that I like to teach and design as well. I feel like whether or not you're making my patterns or my designs, I often want you to walk away with something that you can carry over into your next making experience. That really stood out to me. As with any color work chart or motif, you might find that some of the patterns in this book have one element that you like for, you know, the way the colors are put together, but you want to use the color work chart from another pattern. And the way the patterns are laid out in the book, you can absolutely do that. I won't show you the charts, of course, but the charts represent motifs over a certain stitch count, like in any color work knitting. And that means if you really like the teacups on the coffee break socks, but you like the striping on the foot from another sock pattern instead of a plain foot with no colors, you can combine those two things into your own unique sock pattern. I think that that makes this book uh, extend out into infinite possibilities. 25 patterns means, let's say you were ambitious and wanted to knit one sock a month. That's over two years worth of knitting. And it's a great way to give yourself a gift that is gonna keep on giving from this collection. I thought it would be cool for you to hear from Charlotte herself a little bit more about this book. A bit of background, Charlotte and I met each other on a trip to Norway. A group of us visited our friend Patricia, who goes by P4 Chen on Instagram. She had organized a trip for several makers. Many of us happened to be designers and teachers, and a lot of us had never met each other 
in you know in person we might have known each other online but we met in person for the first time in Norway if you can imagine it was a fantastic trip it was like an adult field trip to a really cool place and Charlotte was one of the folks that was on that trip as well Charlotte is funny and easy to be around very humble and I, I loved meeting her I loved spending time with her I think she and I spent a lot of moments on the trip just wide-eyed, kind of not believing <laughs> that we had this opportunity. And so I was really happy that that was the way I got to know someone who lives very far away from me, but um, has a lot of things in common with me. So uh, hi, Charlotte, if you're watching. <laughs> I was happy that when she released this book, she thought of me as one of the people that might want to take a look at it. I have knit from Charlotte's patterns before. I actually made her whoops a daisy socks and I'll insert a picture of those here. I really enjoyed that process. It took me a while. It took me more than one attempt and at that point I hadn't knit a lot of color work socks so I had to work through tension and yarn choices and all the things that come into play when you're going to do color work sock knitting. But I loved the socks and the motif so much that I pushed forward and I finished them and I love them. I gifted them. I am a convert to color work sock knitting for sure. I'm so grateful to Charlotte for giving me the opportunity to do a small review, but I asked her if she'd be willing to talk a bit about um, some of the things that came together to make this collection possible and she agreed. So now I'm gonna share with you some videos from Charlotte herself. Hi there, Mars. Hi there, viewers of the Hey Brown Berry podcast. Um, thank you so much, Mars, for asking me to talk a little bit about um, my new book, the Charming Colour Like Socks book, um, which was released last week in the US. Um, and it has 25 colour work um, sock patterns in here. Um, I've, ho I've I've tried to design them so um, people who are quite new to sock knitting might not have done colour work before can knit these. Um, there's some beginner patterns in here um, and of course like this one's slightly uh, more difficult because it's all over the foot. Um, some of the patterns they just have a bit of colour work at the top or at the toe. Um, and there's basically there's five chapters in here my style's kind of very uh whimsical and um inspired by by nature and um quite joyful we have some sheep in here we have chickens in here like chili peppers um it's divided into five chapters um there's a chapter with animals a chapter with um flowers uh food, um, the great outdoors, and at the end um, I did a little, uh, I did five holiday patterns for different holidays throughout the year because I know um, lots of knitters and myself, we like to, uh, you know, make uh, socks for ourselves, our friends, our family for uh, different holiday celebrations. So uh, although some of those patterns I would say you don't just have to knit them for that holiday and I'll explain that in a minute. Um, so Mars, you've sent me some questions. I hope I can answer them, not waffle on too much. <laughs> um, so the first question was, how do I hope the knitters will use the collection um, in the book? So I wanted a sock book that would really inspire uh, sock knitters to have as a as a book on their shelf that they can go back to throughout the year um, and knit socks for their friends, for their families, for themselves. I've really tried to do a variation of designs in here that you will find a pattern for almost anyone in your life. And you'll think, oh, that, you know, they would want those, they would want those. So um, even when I was designing it, I was kind of thinking of um, friends and family who, um, and, and thinking, okay, what would they, what do, do they like? Okay, they like chickens, they own chickens. Oh, I want to do a chicken sock. Or uh, like my neighbours, um, she's very into growing chilies. And I thought, oh, I wonder, can I do 
socks with chili peppers. Um, so that's how the spicy socks came around. And then my friend, um, he's got this gorgeous dog. And I thought, oh, I've done cat socks in the past, my self-published patterns. Can I do a dog sock for, for people who love dogs? So, um, yeah, I, I really hope I've created a, a book that people um, can look in for, for gift knitting or for themselves um, and find something that they want to knit, for, you know, throughout the year and, and to keep it, you know, forever for, for, for knitting. Um, also, there's a lot of charts in here because um, sometimes I do patterns, uh, for instance, the Blooming Lavender pattern where you've got pattern up here and then I've got a little pattern there uh, along before the toe. Um, I can definitely see people would be able to buy this book and um, use the charts maybe if they want on hats or on uh, scarves or the edge of sweaters if they want. Um, yeah, there's a lot of charts in there where uh, people, more experienced knitters, might want to use it on other things that they knit. So that's what I'm hoping for with the book. Um, the next question Mars has asked me is, what design did I find the most challenging? And it's, um, yeah, <laughs> it's quite funny. It was quite near the beginning and um, it just kept going wrong. I had this idea in my head. Um, I, I wanted to make these socks with the, which are called eggs for Easter. Um, though I really don't think they're just an Easter sock. I, I had my sister in mind who owns chickens so any chicken owner anyone who loves chickens or anyone who just finds it funny that they've got an egg on the toe um I really wanted to create this egg toe and it was really difficult <laughs> to get it exactly how I saw it and it to look nice and initially it had no chickens and it kind of looked like that and it just looked odd and um my teenage daughters who uh, are probably my most critical fans, said, no, that looks terrible. And um, our mutual friend, Mars Maria, I showed her to once and she was like, I don't think that looks like what you're thinking it should look like. Anyway, so this probably took over uh, two weeks uh, ripping back, uh, feeling very sad for myself and really wanting it to look great. And eventually I got there and then I realised if I added chickens on the top, it makes it really obvious that that is an egg toe. Um, and I, I'm absolutely delighted with it. And it seems a very popular pattern in the book. And um, it's also a really easy one to knit as well. This is, it's not, it's not difficult to, it's a shorty sock and they're very fast to knit. So I'm really happy that these have, these have been quite popular. So they were the most challenging and I think they're my, the most rewarding because I'm so happy that people really like them. Last question from Mars, what helps me to keep developing new ideas and designs? So um, I feel very inspired by everything around me, really. I'm always taking photos of the, of nature, of colour combinations that you see in flowers, in on like tiles on the floor, um, pottery, when I'm out shopping with my daughters and we see like pe what people are wearing and colour combinations. Um, yeah, I find that virtually anything inspires me. I, I'm sure you find that too, Mars, um, when you're designing, like you'll see something or like a fabric or something, think, oh, I can put that into knitwear I can I can can I do that and it sparks a little excitement in your head and you have to work on it I also find um for me in particular is when I am designing for someone that I like like I was saying when I'm thinking for of my sister and my neighbor and, and my daughter she really wanted some like funky heart socks sometimes it I'm really inspired by designing for other people who, uh, you know, I love in my family and my friends. Um, that also helps me always come up with with new ideas as well. So and I haven't I haven't run out of ideas yet. I still I find when I'm like um, not busy and I'm quiet that suddenly all these new ideas start pinging in my head. So, yeah, it's good to remember to rest sometimes and then the ideas will 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 return. So. And I just want to say thank you so much, Mars, for asking me. Um, and I hope I encourage people 
maybe to knit some socks who've not not maybe lost their sock mojo didn't want to try colorwork socks before um and yeah just enjoy your knitting and uh thank you very much and bye friends i hope you enjoyed that snippet directly from the designer and author herself thank you charlotte for doing that and I recommend you get yourself a copy of this great book. I recommend you come back and join me on the channel whenever you can. I recommend you comment below if you're doing any kind of sock knitting. Uh, this is autumn in the Northern Hemisphere and I think a lot of wool and yarn has been pulled out for, uh, for wintry, fall and wintry making. So share with us what you're working on. Share with us if you've knit from Stone Knits patterns before. I would love to hear what you found and tried. And thank you. Thank you for spending this time with me. I'll see you again next time. Bye for now. Mwah.